Ladies and gentlemen, I know these intros are mad awkward because of the way that I look at my screens and the way that I'm trying to record them, but we are back with the Atlanta United 2 career mode series. I think it says it's recording. It's going to be really awkward for the next like 10 to 30 minutes on uh, however long this episode ends up being if it's not recording. Um, but we're back with the Atlanta United 2 series. Like I said, for these next like three episodes, I am recording a uh, commentary over them. So you're not going to see the face cam of my actual reactions during the game, although they're not that great. Um, and we're, we're just going to kind of do it like that. I will say that there's going to be... This video is just going to be awkward. That's all I'm going to say. But it's fine. Um, I did want to kind of talk about Atlanta United 2. Because obviously this is an Atlanta United 2 series. Um, as of right now, we I think we only signed... Let me actually get the correct number here. We only signed 8 players of the inaugural Atlanta United 2 career mode, uh, uh, career mode lineup. So, Alessandro Con Castro and Diego Lopez were under contract. Um, we exercised the options on Barajas, the guy that won the, um, the Atlanta Dream tryout thing. Um, Sprayberry alum, if you're from this area. Uh, Paul Christensen, um, goalkeeper that we've been kind of trying to play with a little bit here and there. Uh, grow up, so he's one of the other, you know, kind of young guns coming in for goalkeeper options. Uh, Kissidu, I believe. Laurent Kissidu is how you say his name. Uh, Jack Metcalf. Calf. Metcalf. Right? Jack Metcalf? I think. Um, Solid player. He's been doing really well for Atlanta United, too. Uh, he's impressed me the little bit that I have watched him play, uh, which isn't much. Um, here, this is going to be a really weird cut, but we're going to go through this. Yosef Samuel, uh, and then we've re-signed uh, Ruthven, and then we declined a bunch of options, including AJ Conkren, which who I believe was also another uh, Atlanta United local, uh, and Devin Sandoval as well. So um, those are the players like that we just ended up cutting, and then like the ones that we kept were everybody up until Yosef Samuel. Um, so it's just like kind of a weird period that they're in. Uh, I haven't really been keeping up with who they're signing and everything like that, but obviously they still have a lot of our players, the players that we're using in this career mode, um, that can also fill out the squad as well. So I'm kind of curious how that team goes the next couple weeks, um, but then obviously they're playing in a new stadium, which I still just can't, you know, fully get behind. Uh, but I do really, really like Kennesaw Stadium. It is a soccer-specific stadium. It is going to be fun to see games there. Um, in the middle of the week, it's going to be super, super difficult to get out to games, especially for me. Um, I work in College Park. I have to drive all the way through it, like uh, past Atlanta on 285, and then hop on 75 if I want to go to Kennesaw. And that stretch from Smyrna to Kennesaw on 75 is some of the worst traffic you're going to hit other than like I-20 probably or Georgia 400. So um, it's really, really bad. I'm not going to enjoy it. Check out my merch. <laughs> so again, this is kind of a weird cut that we're in in the, in the video. But during the stream, I was showing off a merch. This is my new merch if you guys are wondering over there on YouTube. Uh, we have sweatshirts. We have t-shirts, phone cases, long sleeve shirts. Uh, two versions of the long sleeve shirts and hoodies. So it's basically this hoodie, but instead of it being on the sleeve, it's on the front. Uh, you don't see it in this video because I just came out with it not that long ago. Here's our t-shirt. So I wanted to go for a jersey style. Uh, we have a crest on the left uh, chest area. Bice uh, pec. Ooh, almost called it a bicep. Jesus Christ, can you tell? Um and then our logo across the middle, uh, which is malicious in Korean, uh, with obviously our city Atlanta on it as well. So if you guys do, are like interested in that kind of thing, um, it is obviously up on my um, up on my merch website, which I'll link in the description below. If you guys are ever watching the stream, it's linked underneath the stream. Um, but it is, I believe, it's Streamlabs. Uh, whatever the Streamlabs website is. What's the Streamlabs website? Uh, let's see. I can tell you right now. Streamlabs.com slash MaliciousFC1 is the name of the merch website. You'll just click on the merch tab, and um, it's just a bunch of cool stuff. There's some long sleeve shirts, some short sleeve shirts, some uh, hoodies. The hoodies are like my pride and joy, uh, which I think I end up just like going on a rant here for a little bit, which we're not going to go too high into a rant. I am going to skip forward in this video a little bit. So, one sleeve, this is malicious, if that's your kind of thing. If you like sleeve print, me personally, I like sleeve print. 
and the other side is a skull and um, flower design and again the the logo in the middle as well um, so it's the only hoodie I think that doesn't have my crest on it uh, my YouTube crest which you guys have obviously seen for the past few months uh, but yeah that's our merch I hope you guys do like it obviously it is $45 it's a little pricey for some people I know uh, but it is it is a pretty decent price compared to a lot of other places um, I personally have ordered a fair few amount of things that I'm hoping come in soon so that I can show you guys that uh, the quality of them and really get behind my merch and actually be able to say that I really enjoy it um, but yeah so we're not gonna we're, we're, we're not gonna overdo that one you know so we're just gonna hop in episode six the real episode where we hop back into the game all right um so that's kind of atlanta united 2 obviously uh george bello when he's not playing with the first team is gonna play for atlanta united 2 um chris goslin andrew carlton hopefully get some minutes i'd like to see alec play for atlanta united 2 a little bit more this year just so he can get some gameplay time uh because more alec is more fun for me i do enjoy seeing alec play so i want to see him get those minutes uh really prove why he's in atlanta um at least while we still have brad until he can get his uh opportunity to come back into the first team so hopefully that'll happen one day i would like to see alec get that opportunity um obviously brad is brad so that's kind of hard to do um other things I kind of wanted to talk about in this episode, now that I'm sitting here blanking watching our gameplay, did we ever actually talk about Chris Goslin's hair in that episode? I just don't get it. Why? Why'd they make him a ginger? His hair's literally never been orange. I don't think. It literally makes no sense. But it's fine. Um, George Bello has been really fun in this career mode. I'll talk about that a little bit uh, while I sit here and try to figure out what I was uh, attempting to talk about this episode. Um... When you create a player, it's kind of a weird ground, and you guys are going to see in these next few episodes, Bellow's starting to get a little too high rated a little too quickly, um, which I don't really mind in terms of the gameplay, but it is going to make it really, really difficult to keep him, so I'm actually going to stop training him over the next few videos, probably the next season or so. Uh, I'm going to let, obviously, his potential will grow just by playing games and being in games and getting in-game um, attributes and stuff. Um... But the actual training process of him is going a little too fast. He's getting really, really highly ranked, which is making him really, really good and fun to play with. Uh, but we got we got to chill out a little bit. So it has been fun with Bello and the squad, though. Um, I do enjoy kind of doing that. Uh, I think a video that's going to come out this week as well is Breck Shea with the Atlanta United lineup with Pity Martinez. And it's going to be kind of showcasing Breck Shea, but then also talking about how those players fit into the Frank DeBoer system, how those players are going to play with each other, in what formation, and really who I think is going to end up playing best out of our 3DPs plus Breck Shea as of our new signings right now, um, with obviously hopefully a couple more to come here in the next few weeks, at least I would hope. Um, but we'll see kind of how things end up breaking down. Um, if that's a video you guys are interested in seeing, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I do, again, like I said last episode, I enjoy these kind of videos because it gives me an opportunity just to kind of talk and rant and do whatever. Um, so if that's kind of a thing you're interested in, like I said, we are going to be starting a new series on the channel, um, which is going to be Atlanta United. I'm going to call it the Atlanta United World Tour. Um, and it's, it's a series that I was going to end up doing with the team that I had currently in my Atlanta United career mode, the one, the MLS series, after we ended up winning the U S open cup and progressing, I was going to basically take that team, try to recreate them as much as possible, and then start a new career mode in a new country, um, until I won that league, which potentially that could still end up happening. But I ended up, you know, thinking to myself, why do that with that team? Why not do it with the Frank DePore team that's coming up right now? So obviously that team's going to the Champions League. So what we're going to be trying to do is I think we're going to try to do it in Mexico. Um, I'd like to do it in Argentina, but the league isn't fully licensed in... Um, look at that goal from Brandon Vasquez, by the way. I don't know how he scores that, but he scores that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um I would like to do it in Argentina, but they don't have full licensing, so we're not going to be able to do it there. So we're going to do Mexico. Um, I would like to do another team in South America, but I don't know who's available. If you guys could let me know in the comment section down below if there's a South American league you want me to play in. Um, I can play in Argentina. It's just that they don't have all their teams, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, 
Also, I need to think, uh, and if you guys are interested in this, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I've been thinking about doing a um, career mode on PC. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try uh, just because I don't know how well my PC is going to handle it. But I'm going to try to see if I can get Atlanta United on PC, or uh, FIFA 19 rather, on PC, and uh, see if I can do a career mode with them. Um, and do some sort of video with uh, Atlanta United because there's more options on career mode on PC that would be a lot more entertaining for FIFA 19 um, as we move forward with our career modes. So if that's something you guys are interested in, definitely let me know. I'm going to try to see if I can work on getting that done soon. Uh, that way we can have that series going as well. Um, if there's a specific series, now that the Atlanta United one is probably coming to an end um, in terms of the MLS version of it, obviously doing the world tour now as well, uh, I think it gives us room to do another series. Uh, we just kind of have to see if FIFA is going to let me play and record at the same time without nuking my computer. So we'll see how that goes. But the World Tour concept is going to be super fun for me. If there are certain leagues that you guys are interested in seeing, let me know in the comments section down below. Because um, like I said, I want another South American league. I want to do Mexico. Um, I want to do China. The Chinese Super League would be super fun to do. Um, then I would probably... I was going to say England, but Atlanta United 2 is going to be doing my England series. Um, and we don't really know how fast we're going to go up in the ranks. So it's possible we end up in the Premier League around the same time that I would do England anyways. So I may do Spain or Germany uh, and see kind of what we could do there. Maybe even the Netherlands now that we have Frank De Boer. See what we can do against Ajax. Uh, go up into... Scotland and try the Scottish Premier League see if we can beat Celtic and Rangers in their league honestly though if we end up in Europe we're probably gonna wherever we go is where we're gonna end up and then I'm gonna try to win the Champions League with Atlanta United and then we would try maybe a different continent or a different country or something of that nature uh goal right there from number 16 I don't even remember who wears these jersey numbers anymore thinking about it uh I was gonna try to say who that was but I actually have no idea um, ah, if you guys watch my streams, you know I yawn way too much. I haven't had caffeine yet. I literally rolled out of bed this morning, uh, and by this morning I mean twelve o'clock. I was I I plan on getting up at ten, but ended up waking up at twelve. So that's how that's how today is going. So you know that's just kind of how things have been. I'm trying to really think of anything else that you guys want me to talk about. So. If there are more things that you guys have in mind of questions you want me to talk about, rants you want me to go on, we might use this as our, if you guys remember my malicious intent podcast that I was potentially thinking about doing, but ended up just not doing. Um, let me know if that's something you're interested in. We may end up using this platform as kind of the beginning of that, uh, the relaunch of that, just because... I do want to use it in the future for talking about things outside of football, outside of footy. Uh, but as of right now, I think it's just it would be interesting to to listen to my thoughts about footy, about Atlanta United, about the MLS, things like that. So if those are rants you guys are interested in hearing, let me know because I like ranting. Ranting's fun. Uh, I like talking until I can't talk anymore. Um, and I'm gonna see if is that gonna go away? Cool, cool. Uh, is that going to go away? Probably not. There we go. Um, so I'm trying to think what else, what else have I not talked about? Uh, should we, should we rant about Chris McCann? Because I know there's a lot of people that are wondering where Chris McCann still fits into our squad. Now that we brought in Breck Shea, now that we're bringing in pity, now that this, that, and the other, why are we still paying Chris McCann more than most of our team? Um, and really, that just comes down to the fact that he can literally play anywhere on the field. I'm convinced if you told Chris McCann to go out there and play striker, he might do a better job than Kenwin Jones did. Um, <laughs> and that's mainly a slight towards Kenwin Jones more than anything. He might do more than Romario did. Um, two of the best strikers in Atlanta United history. Uh, Joseph Martinez is a, a slum and does not deserve credit for anything. It's really a Kenwin Jones and Romario Williams show out here. Uh, but really, I think he could genuinely play a striker. Uh, just because he could head the ball. 
But whenever you have a player, and I've ranted about this in my streams 94,000 times, I'm sure, is as somebody's going to say in the comment section down below that I talk about this way too much. But I always said I was going to make a video and never did. Um, Chris McCann is one of the most important pieces to the club. He's one of the most important pieces to the bench. There's no bench without Chris McCann. Chris, Chris McCann is as important to our bench and our reserves as the leg that holds the bench up that holds all the players. You know what I'm saying? It's as important as the foundation of the stadium. And I know that doesn't really sound like a compliment to Chris McCann, most likely. Um... But he is genuinely one of the most valuable people in the team, which is why he gets paid a decent amount of money. One, he came from Europe. We're not going to get a player from Europe and not pay them what they're, they're, they're worth. Um, so yeah, he's going to be one of the most paid players or one of the highest paid players in the team. I get that and that stresses people out. We still have a lot of money. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that there's still a lot of money in our club. Uh, so it's not like he's really, if we lost Chris McCann, we're going to go get like four equally decent players. Um, because in the reality of it, even if we did that, they're probably not going to do, they could probably do their one position better than Chris McCann for the same price. Or maybe a little bit cheaper. But you're not going to get f the, the amount of players that play the position that Chris McCann can play. Um, you're not going to get that kind of value from trying to replace him with every position. Um, do I think there are players out in the world that we could end up getting that could do Chris McCann's job if he ever decides to leave? Absolutely. Um, but I do think he is vital. The man has played center back, left back, center mid, center defensive mid. I think he's played on the right as well by accident, just by way of nature. Um, and again, I, th I genuinely think he could probably play striker. You never know. He could play goalkeeper for all we know. Uh, who knows what he does in his spare time. So it, it, it would just be interesting. And I think Chris McCann does something for leadership in the squad. Uh, he might not be the most, most vocal person that we know of, but I do think he has influence in a lot of the young players in the team. He has influence and knowledge about the way that he plays, about the way that he enjoys um, learning the different positions and how he understands taking his strengths of being a center mid and his strengths of being a defender or left mid and kind of like morphing them all together to be able to switch it in his head to actually play a different position. Sure, he's not going to be George Bello or Greg Garza that's going to push forward and overlap Barco or Pity or Miggy, whoever's on the left this year. That's not his play style, but that's not what we're expecting him to do because on the right side, we still have those players that are running, right? Um, we still have the player on the left that can overlap. We still have a midfielder that could overlap in Nagby, Rometty, Miggy, whoever, um, whoever's playing that center attacking mid position or a center defensive mid. Uh, those players can still overlap, and then Chris McCann is deep enough that he can defend well. Now, last season, I did make a statement that there weren't goals conceded. I think there were only there was only one goal conceded from Chris McCann's side of the field at that given point. And then after I said that, I think he had conceded like three more goals after that in a matter of like four games. But I that my statement is still true in the sense that I think Chris McCann is good on that side. Um, him and Barco never really got on the same wavelength in terms of where passes should go. Uh, there were a lot of passes that Barco made well that Chris McCann failed and vice versa. And then as well, there were a lot of bad passes that Chris McCann or Barco made that were poor and ended up trying to push it a little too much and ended up failing those as well. So it's kind of just like this weird ground. You would like those two players to play a little bit better passing to each other. I don't think Chris McCann's obviously going to be needed at left back this year um i do think he could come in as center defensive mid um and he could do a job there uh, obviously we still have kevin kratz as we know uh gressel that can play center mid or right mid um we still have nagby remedi lorenowitz uh pity is going to be coming into the squad so the pieces are still there chris goslin's still there as well the pieces are there that Chris McCann, I think, will always have a place on the bench this season, uh, and he will always end up being a sub. He's going to be one of those 
very specific subs that are probably going to end up coming in every game but might play a different position every game might not be the highest rated player in the game but is going to do the job that he is needed to do and not get any credit for it and that's just how chris mccann is chris mccann's always going to be the player that doesn't get the credit he deserves and uh that 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 does suck when it comes to chris mccann but that is uh you know just how it goes sometimes so um that is kind of going to be the end of this episode this this rant i'm going to split these videos out a little bit longer than usual so these videos have been uh 30 minute videos uh but i can only rant so long and my rants can only be done in specific times because i need things to talk about uh and there really hasn't been much that's been announced with atlanta united so if you guys did enjoy make sure you like comment and subscribe and until the next one i'll see you guys later peace